new bipartisan legislation in the Senate hoping to create and expand U.S. trade partnerships while countering China's growing control over global manufacturing. Join us right now with the details. Republican Senator Bill Cassidy is the co-author of the America's Act, along with Democratic Senator Michael Bennett. I uh, want to welcome both of them to the program. Uh, Senator Cassidy, w walk us through this bill and, and really what the chances are of it getting passed at this point. The United States has not had a coherent policy towards Latin America since JFK. And every administration kind of lurches one way or the other. In the meantime, China has come in with debt diplomacy, corrupting local officials, uh, you know, buying a sweetheart deal on a contract, which then creates unrest among the people affected by it. And in so doing, erodes, you know, the country's integrity, uh, creating instability, of releasing waves of immigration to the United States. We need a coherent policy. We've, we, Michael and I have put up something called the America's Act, and it's got like four pillars, if you will. Corruption's a huge issue in Latin America. We put in an e-governance system patterned after a country such as Greece. Greece began to pay all taxes, do all permitting online. They lowered their rates, their marginal rates, but they actually increased their receipts because they began to actually track things online. We could do that in a country like Guatemala, and people could be more likely to get a permit for their business, therefore more likely to pay taxes. I could go on. Secondly, to encourage investment. We think that if you begin to squeeze out the corruption, there'll be more foreign direct investment. As you do that, that increases trade. Lastly, or not lastly, but another component, we would allow countries which met certain criteria to kind of bolt on to the USMCA. And now they could trade not just with the United States in a bilateral relationship, but in a multilateral relationship, which would improve their economy, make it more stable, and make people more likely to stay there as opposed to migrate to the United States. I could go on, Andrew, but that's a nice start. Senator, explain this, though. Explain the connection between uh, this, this proposal that you have and, and we have it on the screen right now, if you know, you can see it says confronting the China challenge. How interrelated are these two things? Very interrelated. Um, if, if, if I heard a general say that if a young recruit needs a car, he's going to buy the car, even if it puts him deeply into debt with bad terms. So there's countries in Latin America that are turning to China for financing of projects. Uh, the Chinese will bring in Chinese workers, bring in Chinese cement, et cetera. It doesn't really leave the country better off. In many cases, the construction is shoddy, but the country is left with bad debt. Now, if the only place you have to turn, though, when you need help is China, you're going to turn to China. This is a way to use good trading relationships, to structural reform within the country, to create an environment where other countries will come in, including the U.S., uh, in a more positive way not with debt diplomacy, not with corrupting local officials, but by actually making a stronger structure of government right. and of economy. Senator, we had Nikki Haley on the broadcast earlier this week, and, and we've had a lot of folks on recently, especially among uh, Republicans, but, but increasingly Democrats as well, who are uniquely, or maybe it's no longer uniquely, uh, very specifically hawkish about China, very, very hawkish about China. I mean, I thought the Nikki Haley's comments, you know, suggested she's concerned about almost, uh, you know, I don't know about an imminent war, but a, a real sort of sense that, that, that problems are, are coming and coming very, very soon. Do you have any perspective on how you would effectively try to prevent that if that was the case? And is there any way to create a more stable relationship? I think so. We need China as a frenemy. Um, a competitor that will challenge us militarily, but there's a way to defuse it. Uh, so another thing that we're proposing to address uh, the China situation, if you will, is a foreign pollution fee. Right now, China just emits all kinds of air pollution. They do not enforce uh, environmental regulations. It's actually cheaper to manufacture in China. It is an incentive for companies to move there. A CFO told me, he could get 18 to 19 percent uh, return on investment building there because they told him he did not have to turn on his scrubbers. He could not defend taking a lower ROI building here, having to comply with our environmental regulations. OK, right. the international commons are destroyed. Let's impose upon China the, the avoided cost of them not complying with environmental regulations. If you bring over a carbon intensive product, 
okay, you are going to have to pay a tariff rel that, that's equal to the to the regulatory cost of compliance uh, in the United States for that particular product. Hmm. Now, we'd like to swap out existing tariffs. We don't want to increase tariff barriers. But you would make it a tariff which was directly tied to their lack of environmental compliance. That gives them a positive incentive to begin to lower their, their uh, environmental footprint. Uh, 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 but it right. also strengthens our economy and I think, I think begins to, to equalize the right. relative imbalance about some things. It's a positive. One last quick question, which is one of the things you're trying to do is end corruption uh, in some of these other countries. You talked about sort of the example of Greece and being able to collect taxes. And I'm so curious whether you think you would apply some of the things that are in this proposal to those of us here in the United States, because we have uh, so many both loopholes. I mean, we don't, and we have an electronic system, but boy, does that system not work. And, and, and the way to audit and to actually control and make sure that we're actually collecting the taxes that we need. What do you think of that? I, I think there's many ways we can apply this. So, for example, one thing we envision is instead of having to pay somebody under the table in a Latin American country to get a permit to open your business, you would do it online. We should do that here in the United States. You can do so many things online that you don't have to waste your time to go stand in line. Now, we don't have to pay a bribe here typically to get a permit, but there's still the opportunity cost of having to stand in line. There's a lot of things we can do in the, in the e-governance situation that'll make our society right. more, more pleasant, more efficient.